Hi, I'm James from J Cycle Shack, and today we're just going to run through sag settings on Fox 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 suspension. These are Fox 36s, so really the the uh, the advice does change slightly from 38, 32, 30. Uh, also the 34s, but this is a 150mm travel Fox 36 fork, um, we're just going to set up the sag, a bit of advice on that. So, um, like I mentioned, this is the, uh, a Boost 110 um, 36 fork, 2022 fork. Now, basically, there's, it is, this is very simple, it's very simple to set up the fork. You've got a few main, main things just to be to be aware of first, and a bit of kind of jargon maybe. So you've got your your stanchions, which is this bit, the bit that you know you, you, that moves up and down almost if you like. You've got the lowers, and then you've got the crown as well. You've got the air side, so this is the side that the air goes in. So you can unscrew this here, and this is where your, your air goes in with a shock pump. It can only be with a shock pump. Um, so that's that side, and then you've got this side, which is the um, the side that you can adjust how the how the fork feels. So you can almost like lock out the fork if you like, stiffen up the fork. Uh, when you're setting sag, you want to always be in the open position, the unlocked position, open or unlocked position, not in the closed position. On, on, on the underside of the fork, on this side, there's just a, a nut, and on the on the other side, on this side, is your rebound damper, uh, your rebound adjuster, with the damper inside the fork. So that clicks to for for adjustment, which is the, the clicks are how fast or how slow the fork recovers after uh, compression. So when setting sag, we're making sure that the rubber band is all the way to the bottom um, and then what we're going to do this is quite difficult to do on your own which you're going to see but what we're going to do is get on the bike in a neutral riding position so not make any you know reactions where you're pushing the fork down like this because that will affect you your, your reading you want to be getting getting on the bike in a in a in a neutral position that's not making any like move any kind of fast movements to so not to affect the effect of reading so if we want to get on and then if you want what you need to do is stand into a neutral position a neutral riding position and then the fork will compress and then just jump off What that, what that what you will then see is a a gap in between, hopefully a gap in between your your, your rubber o-ring here your, and then obviously the sanctions. Now, what we're aiming for is, and what you want to be looking for here is a between a 15 and 20% sag. I would recommend and prefer a 20% sag, a little bit of a softer fork. And to be honest, this is around about perfect. This is around about where we want to where we want to be. So, uh, but just to show you uh, as an example, if you you know if your fork has got too too little pressure, not enough pressure, uh, we can show you the example of what what it will look like. So we're just going to show you an example of too little pressure in the fork and what that would look like. So. Okay, so um, basically, this is then this is then showing too you know too much of a gap. So the percentage is too much. This is maybe around thirty percent, which we then need to add pressure. So adding pressure to the fork should only be done via a, via a shock pump. Um, they're available from thirty pounds. You can also release air. From, from this too. So if it screws on like a valve in your car, so it's the same Schrader valve as what's in your car, what's on a car, should I say. Screw that on until you get a pressure reading, make sure it's nice and tight, and then add pressure. 
it will give you the gauge here, it's a, it's a trial and error thing, so it will give you the pressure. At the moment I'm going to add uh, up to 100 psi. I, I would say normally around 75 kilograms would be 80-ish uh, psi. That's, that's, a, that's a rough rough idea. It depends what you're riding. If you're riding jumps and you know bigger stuff, then you want a little bit more pressure. Obviously, a lot more pressure. But then, obviously, it would run in the firm setting as well. Once I'm happy with the pressure, unscrew, and then put your cap back on. So, so just a little bit on on setting up suspension. It is relatively simple. Um, it should be done. You should be done doing it maybe every, you know, every few rides. I would say just to assess and check how your suspension is performing, and getting the most out of that suspension fork. So, should be, you know, to, to get the most out of your bike, definitely look at setting the sag up first. It's the very, very minimum you should be doing in terms of suspension setup. Once you've got your sag right and you're happy, then you can start adjusting, you know, your rebounds and your compressions and all that kind of stuff. But the sag is essential to get to making the bike feel uh, the best it can possibly be, and it can make or break you know your, your riding experience. So, you know, look at pressures. You want to be looking at around fifteen to twenty percent sag on this particular fork. That can vary. So check the manuals, but that's how to set up sag, and that's why it should be.